Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight video and it is on a house that I've never talked about on the channel before, probably for good reason, but uh, this house is called Naughton and Wilson and today we're going to talk about a fragrance called Gravitas. Now, anytime I get two samples land on my doorstep, um, I know it's about time to talk about a fragrance. Uh, no clue where this one came from. And somebody sent me this very kindly, and I can't remember who, but whoever my perfume god person is, thank you very much. Um, and this is a house that um, I stayed away from for a while discussing because uh, Dan and I, our personalities never really got along. We butted heads uh, multiple times. I uh, said some things. He did a whole show about them saying... Uh, you know, YouTuber bashes Mr. Smelly community in shock. Uh, you know how, you know how Dan got to at the, at the end of his streaming days or recently, I should say. Is he even still streaming? I don't know. I saw a thing where he was like selling off a bunch of his fragrances. I don't know what's going on with him. But the reason that I was so critical and harsh of what has happened to his YouTube channel, and to be fair, it is his channel. He can run it however the hell he wants, is, uh, I really liked his original content. You know, just look into his eyes whenever he got his first bottle of Polo Green from that pharmacy, uh, the vintage bottle, and he was so happy about it. Uh, and the type of videos he used to do on the vintage fragrances from the old days, the old days of Fragcom, I really liked. I liked that type of content. And to see what it was, and to see what it turned into, uh, this Jerry Springer-like act, it really kind of disgusted me, you know, but... Uh, like he said, it's his channel and he can run it however he wants. I just, um, it's not my thing. I can't watch that kind of content. I just can't. And it's hard to support a brand like that, which is a shame because for vintage fragrance lovers, this is actually a really good fragrance. Uh, it is. I, I, I'm sorry. It just is. And, and you can shit all over the brand all you want and it's probably justified. But I think that John Steven and Dan, if Dan had any input in this, uh, other than just telling him, you know, he wants maybe like a spicy fougere or something and... Uh, John Stephen went, here you go, and Dan went, great, uh, do that. But um, it's it's a fragrance that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while, but I haven't really figured out how to talk about it. And now I think I have a plan of attack, because I'm just going to say, no matter what you think of Dan, uh, Dan Naughton as the man, okay, um, and what no matter what you think of his YouTube channel, if you look at this fragrance objectively and just focus on the perfume, put all the other stuff to the side. I think this is a good fragrance. In fact, the closest fragrances that I think it kind of falls within, probably the closest of all to me smell-wise is something like um, Invasion Barbar by MDCI. Uh, but this is even creamier lavender. Invasion Barbar is somehow even creamier than the lavender in, in Gravitas. Um, and also something like maybe Fougere Royale. I mean, it's like a Fougere Royale Invasion Barbar, and then the patchouli in the base will remind some people of Zeno, or maybe a little bit of Heritage, or a little bit of Eigner's Free Life, that kind of thing, right? The patchouli in the base gives off a little bit of that. And you see what I'm talking about, traditionally, classically masculine fragrances, right? So if you're a vintage lover, you owe it to yourself to test this, at least. Put all the other bullshit aside and just give it a test, um, is, is what I would say. And like me, you probably won't end up buying it. Um, Especially if you love vintage fragrances, you'll probably just wear your vintages. And But to be fair, this is a fragrance, you know what I thought about as I was wearing this is there was an interview that Thierry Vasser did where he said that when he was 13 years old, he wanted to smell like a man. And what did he do? He went and found fra a fragrance that to him, a, you know, objectified masculinity. And that was Abbey Rouge. And he's like, I've worn Abbey Rouge for the rest of my life since I was 13 years old. This fragrance, Gravitas, to me feels like a fragrance that a young man would gravitate towards because they want to feel grown up. You know, they want to feel like a man inside. They want to smell like a man. They don't want to smell bubble gum. They don't want to smell sweet. They don't want to smell like Sauvage. They don't want to smell like their classmates. It disgusts them to smell like blue fragrances, right? They want to smell like a man. And this is a niche fragrance that's pretty um, accessible that you can get that does have that old school masculine smell about it, right? Uh, and the ingredients smell decent enough, um, and there's nothing in here that's outrageous, you know, there's no high-end oud or anything, so I don't think it's super expensive, but, um, um, we did have a little bit of an interaction, it's funny, because he reached out to me, 
maybe a year or two ago. I can't remember. It, might, it couldn't have been two years ago because I just started my channel. It had to be 18 months to a year ago. And he said, hey, Ramsey, I would like to send you some bottles. Back then, I think Bon Vivor was like the newer thing that just came out. He was like, I'm going to send you a bottle of Gravitas and Bon Vivor. And I said, no, I'd rather you just send me samples. He said, we don't do samples. So either take a bottle or nothing. And I said, okay, send me some bottles. Um, and I was just concerned about the image of, you know, free bottles at the time. Now, whatever, I'll take it and say whatever I want. But um, at the time, I was thinking, nah, maybe I'll just stick to samples. And he said, nope, only bought bottles. I said, okay, and no bottles ever arrived. But um, that's okay, because I got the samples after all. And I can say whatever I want about them. And you can say whatever you want, even if someone does send you a free bottle. But um, I feel like some people are more reliant on it than, than others. As you can see, I'm not reliant on the free bottles. Um, and if I piss someone off by saying something and I don't and I don't get any more free bottles, well, fuck them, you know? Doesn't matter to me. But um, the thing about it is um, I tried to put all that to the side, right? Irregardless of how you feel about it. So let's let's talk about the fragrance. And like I said, this is a proper masculine that I can kind of get behind. And the lavender in here is kind of the uh, focal point of, it's the engine behind this fragrance to me. And it's a very clean lavender. You'll notice it from the get-go. The word that popped into my head as I was wearing this is a pressed lavender. Just imagine a pressed, clean white shirt. There's like a pressed lavender feel here. Um, and it is not herbal. It's not the scratchy lavender. It's, it's, um, it's not lavender in a thunderstorm or anything like that. It's kind of this um, very clean, pressed, um, slightly creamy lavender uh, that reminds me of the lavender in MDCI Invasion Barbar. Now, I think Invasion Barbar is a better fragrance, to be fair. I really think Invasion Barbar is a better fragrance, um, but Gravitas has stuff going for it as well, in my opinion. And... Um, so what ends up happening is in the opening, along with that very clean pressed lavender, you get this sort of um, lemony bergamot, okay? And the bergamot smells very energetic and very lively, okay? There's something very um, spirited about this fragrance, in my opinion. And uh, there is a mandarin orange note, which adds a little bit of sweetness. You'll notice the mandarin orange sweetness kind of... Um, uh, bleeding into the into the dry down but in the opening to me what you're going to get is you're going to get a note that basically smells like you're smelling a beerita has anyone ever had a beerita like a margarita with that beer in there um and just imagine a big fat chunk of lime stuck into the side of that beerita and the reason i say a beerita and by the way it's fully dressed so you got the salt and everything around the rim um and and Imagine that image without the boozy smell, if you can if you can do that. And the reason I say that is because it's one of the best Im uh, images of the opening to me. Uh, that um, uh, reason it popped in my head is just the beer like bubbling. So imagine the beer bubbling under that margarita feel. Um, and the drink is kind of how the fragrance feels because they say there's ambergris in the base. Now, I have no clue about the quality of the ambergris in the base, whether we're talking real ambergris tincture, whether we're talking ambroxan that's just salted, like the birita is salted around the rim. I don't know. Um, I don't know the quality that John Stephen used. Um, by the way, John Stephen, I think, worked for brands like Check and Spake, and um, he also has done things for a couple other perfume houses um, I think most notably he did things for Electimus, he did things for the Cotswold Perfumery, which I have yet to smell any of Electimus, I've yet to smell any of Cotswold, um, and I've yet to smell any of those Check and Spate fragrances, so I, I don't, I don't know any, really any of his work. All I know about John Stephen is he is a British perfumer. And apparently Dan wanted to keep a British perfumer since it's a British brand in the UK. Kind of a cool idea, right? Um, but I don't know the quality of the materials. The materials smell okay. They don't smell low quality. They don't smell super high quality. They smell okay. Um, but I don't know what type of... When they say ambergris, I have no clue, you know, what, um, what they mean by that. But I can tell you that um, it, the... Ambergris gives off this bubbly-like feel. You know, there's this um, 
Um, just imagine the bubbles from the beer rising up. And remember, take that alcohol note out. Just think of the imagery. And um, the interesting thing is just imagine the space between the bubbles, okay? And imagine each one of those bubbles is carrying a note, right? And so as the fragrance continues to dry on your skin, what ends up happening is this sort of um, herbal green coriander is in one bubble, the cardamom, which is very green in nature, is in another bubble, and the pepper is in another bubble, okay? And as they sort of make their way to the surface, um, the notes carrying those bubbles as they get closer to your nose pop. And whenever they pop, you're hit with a um, sudden sort of lively burst of that particular note. So you get pepper. You get cardamom. The cardamom is green and beautiful. And um, you get this peppery feel. Um, it, makes the, it makes the fragrance, um, you know, it makes it shimmer a little bit. And um, I think that the patchouli in the base, like I said, is what really makes people get reminded of the Zenos or the Heritages or something like that. Because as the fragrance dries down, you definitely get that vintage, old school, mature patchouli feel, which I love. If you know my taste, these type of fragrances, we'll call them, um, you know, I, I've been calling these um, amber fougeres, okay? So I've been calling these amber fougeres. I don't know if that's the technical term, but I, it's the closest I can get to this type of DNA, if you will. Um, so Gravitas is maybe more of a spicy fougere because that green cardamom cooling spice with the sharper pepperiness um, and then that old school, you know, patchouli, which you'll definitely get, feels very traditionally masculine and um, very, I would say, um, sort of, uh, how do I want to say this? It. I think it feels very, com not common necessarily, but you'll be reminded of other fragrances from the past when you wear this, okay? Feels like a niche version of a vintage fragrance, right? Feels like an approximation of a vintage, but done in the vintage style. So I think they put little touches to try and make it somewhat modern. They didn't want to completely turn off modern guys, right? Um, and so they, they put some touches in here that make it somewhat modern without being an altogether modern composition. You're not gonna get any bubblegum sweetness. You're not gonna get huge loads of amber woods. You're not gonna get anything like that. That's why I say, I think if you're a vintage lover, if you love how perfumery used to be done, this is a pretty interesting niche release all in all. Um, I think that um, I think that the price still seems relatively fair. Let me see what the Naughton and Wilson website has to say about these um just curious curious about okay 120 dollars is what 100 i guess it's a 100 mil bottle and the inspiration for gravitas says 21st of october 1805 at the battle of trafalgar the british naval fleet under the leadership of admiral lord nelson took the french fleet under the command of admiral bill in the wave in one of the most famous battles in naval history that's true um probably one of the only times that you know, Napoleon was good at a lot of things. He was not good at naval warfare. You know, he couldn't use the speed like he could on land. And he, I don't think he really understood naval tactics properly. But um, other than that, I think Napoleon kicked their ass all over the place back then. It was a time when Napoleon of France and George III of England fought for dominance in Europe and beyond. A time when men of great gravitas shaped history. I have to say, okay, I actually kind of like the name, gravitas. I mean... Um, I use that word when you're talking about maybe a man that has a little maturity and he knows how to hold himself, you know, no matter what level of life you're in. If you, you can be an 18 year old and have gravitas, you know, it just depends on how you carry yourself, how you hold yourself, um, the way you present yourself to, to the world and people in general. And so I like the name. I like gravitas. Gravitas Pour by Naughton and Wilson is an homage to such great figures and is also a fragrance for the indomitable and indefatable modern man. Um, okay, so I don't really understand that inspiration at all. I don't know how the Battle of Trafalgar works out to basic masculine fougere, but um, we'll leave that alone for now. John Stevens is an English perfumer with an illustrious career in the industry. He is the man behind Cotswold Perfumery. Okay, so that's actually his brand and has created perfumes for top brands worldwide. He has also created bespoke perfumes for the British royal family. Okay, so um, 
I think the old timers who remember what masculine perfumery used to be, you know, if you like to watch my vintage Hall of Fame reviews, right? My, um, my reviews for things like YSL Jazz and, you know, that Antaeus and that kind of thing. If you like vintage masculine perfumery, try this. Give it a shot. You know, if, if you're not familiar with um, Mr. Smelly's YouTube channel at all, don't, don't check it out. You'll enjoy the fragrance more without checking out some of his latest content. But if you have an open mind, go to Mr. Smelly's channel, sort by oldest videos to newest, and go watch his old content on some of the old vintage masculine perfumery. He, um, you know, he, for a little bit there, I would say he was even an inspiration to me. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I was just almost so offended by the route his channel took. It would be like me all of a sudden talking about nothing but clones, right? What if I just talked about clones nonstop for the next year? Just video after video after video of clones after the way I've run my channel for the past two years, just clones. Sorry, it's just the way I want to run my channel now. And you're like, what? Uh, where did that come from? Just completely out of left field. Uh, and I just can't, I can't get on with some of the stuff that has been going on on that channel. So I just kind of stay away. Uh, and, and, you know, um, it's just the safest thing to, to stay away from me, which, which is a shame because if you go back and watch some of his old videos, I really feel like he had a passion for perfumery. Now he's like the Jerry Springer of the Fragcom world, which I guess everyone has to play their role. And he made that decision. No one forced him to do that. He made that decision on his own. But, um, but yeah, I, I think at one time he really had a, a, a burning desire, like a, um, he really loved old school perfumery and talked, you know, did great reviews on them and stuff like that. So anyways, that's, um, that's kind of the, the pros and cons here. I don't think I would ever buy a Naughton and Wilson fragrance because I don't want to support what his channel has become, but... I think for maybe someone starting out, maybe you don't want to go just buy the polo green or you don't want to go buy a vintage bottle of um, jazz or or anything like that, right? Um, for someone who wants that touch of vintage but also wants to get a niche fragrance, there's nothing wrong with this. And the price is decent, 120 bucks for 100 mils. That's not bad nowadays. So anyways, that's my take. Um, Naughton and Wilson Gravitas Porome from the year 2020. If you have any experience with this fragrance, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, by the way, this is my 800th video. I'm not going to make a big deal about it because we're kind of at that point where I can't celebrate every milestone, but just something I thought I should mention. 800 videos in the book. Uh, whenever we hit 1,000, we'll do something amazing. We'll have like a blowout spectacular, uh, an extravaganza live stream, 24-hour live stream or something. I don't know. Uh, but, um, I appreciate every single one of you who has watched and commented and been here through all the videos and supported me. And I mean, you know, Fragcom is, it can be whatever you make it. Uh, if you want to make it Jerry Springer, you can do that. But, um, I think I'm very happy with the people that watch my video and, and are here and I'm happy with our little group and, um, what we've kind of created here. So, you know. Thank you to everyone who has supported me. Thanks to folks like Rich Mitch, who initially pushed me to start this channel. Um, and then once I started it, I realized I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed talking about perfume with you guys and kicking the shit and going back and forth and all that stuff. So anyways, um, appreciate everything that everyone has done over these last 800 videos for me. The community is absolutely amazing. Thank you to everyone who sent me stuff, even stuff like this that I forgot who it was. So, um... Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here with me. It's been it's been an amazing ride. So here's to the next 800 videos. So cheers guys and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.